This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right. Uh, in the previous lecture, I revised a little bit of revision of books of prime entry, uh, and I went through the three extra entries that can be relevant to the types of questions you get asked on control accounts. And so uh, I said there were two types of questions. Let me in this lecture go through the first type, which as you'll see is effectively asking you to actually write up a control account. Um, let me show you what I mean. Look at example one. Scimitar proves the accuracy of its receivables and payables ledgers by preparing monthly control accounts. At 1st of September, the following balances existed in the company's accounting records and the accounts agreed. And then the following a list of transactions which took place during September. And we are asked to write up the receivables ledger control account, the payables ledger control account for the month of September. Now in the exam, you wouldn't, couldn't possibly be asked to write up two accounts in full. Um, we're going to do it here, but then I'll tell you how we can make it uh, more typical for the exam. But let's open these accounts. We're going to write up, I'll do them side by side to save going up and down the screen. But we're going to write up the receivables ledger control account. and the payables ledger control account and remember what they are some people get awfully upset about the words you know I remember in the lecture on books of prime entry I, I said it can be confusing with so many similar names but the receivables ledger control account is simply total receivables The total receivables account in the nominal, the general ledger. Payables ledger control account is the total payables account. So let's see what we've got. We're told, uh, firstly, the balance is at the start of the month. So on receivables ledger control, there's a debit balance of 186220. And of course, it's a debit balance, they didn't need to tell us, really. If it's receivables, would you not expect to start with a debit balance? And similarly, at the start of the month, the balance on payables is a credit balance, 89,290. Okay. We're then given... Um, the totals of all the transactions which took place during September, and so we've got to write up the books. So do it with me. First of all, credit sales or sales on credit 101,260. Well, of course, sales on credit, what's a double entry? Debit receivables, credit sales 101,260. I'm not going to show the double entry. All we require to write up here are total receivables, total payables. We're not required to show the other entries. Next one, credit purchases. One other way of saying purchases on credit. Surely if you buy goods on credit, debit purchases, credit payables. 68,420. Sales returns. Well, I mentioned returns in the previous lecture. A sales returns, it means a customer is returning goods to us, and if they're returning goods, they owe less money. And so, debit sales or debit returns, credit receivables, 9160. And the nice thing again is, you don't have to worry about the double entry. Surely, if they've returned goods, they owe us less your credit receivables. And similarly, purchase returns. We've bought goods, we've returned them. 
will owe less money, debit uh, payables 4 to 80. Uh, next one, cash received from customers. Uh, cash received from customers, presumably this is credit customers. Uh, and so, what's the double entry? Debit cash, credit receivables. At 92,700. Uh, it's only be careful there. Here I have no choice but to assume that this is cash received from credit customers. If I had been told separately that we've made some cash sales, well, remember, cash sales don't affect receivables at all. It would be there to trick you. It would be irrelevant because cash sales, debit cash, credit sales, receivables would not be affected. Cash paid to suppliers. Well, again, I've no choice here but to assume that the purchases were all on credit. So credit cash, debit uh, payables, the cash paid of 71 840. Discounts received. Dealt with this in the previous lecture. If we received discounts from a supplier, it reduces the amount we owe. Discount received. Debit payables, credit discounts received with 880. Irrecoverable debts written off. Ah, oh, this is way back, but we did deal with irrecoverable debts and allowances. If there are any irrecoverable debts written off, we remove it from receivables. So credit receivables, debit, irrecoverable debts expense. With how much was it? 460. Uh, but again, do watch out for tricks. Um, It'd be quite common to add to that list. Um, doubtful debts, 100. Well, remember, doubtful debts affect the allowance for receivables. If debts are doubtful, we still leave them as owing. It doesn't affect the receivables account. But if they're irrecoverable debts written off, then we do need to remove them, as I've done there. Refunds to customers, well, I'll leave that for one second because I need to say a little bit about it. But we, So let's jump for a moment. Contra settlements for 80. Well, again, in the last lecture I explained, a contra, it always reduces receivables, credit receivables. And the double entry, well, it reduces payables, debit payables. Finally, though, let's go back to this refund and be very careful of the word. Don't confuse it with other things. What a refund is, refund to customer, it's a repayment of cash to a customer. Now, why should you repay cash to a customer? Customers pay us. Well, there are several reasons it may, may happen. Uh, for example, I'll go back to the main example in a minute. But suppose we, we sold goods for 100. Debit receivables for 100. Suppose by mistake, the customer paid us twice. So they only owed us 100, but in fact they paid us 200. Debit cash, credit receivables, 200. Well, they've overpaid us, they've made a mistake. And so what are we going to do? We're going to repay. We don't keep the extra money, we are honest. We're going to repay that money that they shouldn't have paid us. They only owed us 100, they've paid us 200. So repay the 100. Credit cash, debit receivables with refunded 
we've repaid the cash. Another reason it may happen. Suppose again we'd sold goods for a hundred. Debit receivables, credit sales, a hundred. Uh, the customer doesn't want all the goods. They've decided, and we've allowed them to, to return some of the goods. Suppose they return $20 worth. Well, we dealt with returns before. If they return goods, credit receivables, 20. Uh, debit, either sales or a separate account for returns, it doesn't matter. And the customer only owes us 80. Now, uh, all being well, they pay us 18, that's the end of the story. But suppose they'd already paid us and they'd paid us the full 100. Debit cash, credit receivables, they've paid us the 100. Well, of course, they've now overpaid us. Because they'd returned goods, they only actually owed us 80. Uh, they've paid us 100. They've, we've had too much. Now, OK, if they were buying lots of other stuff, we may say, oh, well, next time, don't pay the full amount, pay 20 less. But otherwise, we'd say, well, we'll give you back that 20. And if we repay cash, credit cash, debit receivables, with the 20, the refund. So there are several reasons why this might happen, why you might repay cash. But if ever you refund, whatever the reason is, doesn't matter. If you repay cash, credit cash, debit receivables. And so what's happened here? There have been refunds of 300. I don't care why we've refunded. Maybe part of the cash they paid was an overpayment. Maybe they'd returned goods and they'd already paid for them. I don't care. If we refund, we simply repay cash, credit cash, debit, uh, receivables with the refund. When we receive cash, debit cash, credit receivables, if we repay some of that cash, again, whatever the reason, we effectively reverse it. Credit cash, debit receivables. Well, we've now got everything, so let's strike the balances at the end of the month. Uh, on receivables, the debit side, 186220, 101260, 287780. I hope I've got my additions right. Uh, and therefore the balance 287780 minus 9160, 92700, 460, 480, 184980. Uh, and as far as payables are concerned, the total of the credit side, one five seven seven one zero, and therefore the balance minus four two eighty. I get eight zero two thirty, and there we are. Now, as far as the exam is concerned, uh, as I said, you won't be um, expected to do two. I mean, this is just going to be a tiny two mark or whatever question, and so it would only be uh, writing up one of the accounts. They could give you. They could give you a question exactly like this one, but only ask you what the final balance on receivables was. So it would only be that bit you were doing. But with all the information there, you know, they're testing that you realise credit sales are relevant. 
But if all you're doing is writing at that account, credit purchases aren't relevant. I think you see what I'm getting at. Uh, how you do your workings is up to you. You wouldn't actually be required to produce a T account. They'd want the final balance. But I think a quick T account as workings is the most efficient way of doing it. Or have a go at this yourself sometime. Take the same question, but suppose I told you the opening balance. I told you the closing balance. I've given you all the information except, ooh, sales. So I could give you the same question, everything the same except you're not told the sales figure, but you are told what the final balance is. And then the question would be, what were the sales on credit? So again, you'd write up the T account, you'd leave a blank there. But since we know the final balance, add up the missing figure would be the sales. It's not hard. I mean, have a go, have a go. When you're happy with this one, cross out the sales figure so that you can't read it. Eliminate the 101260. Remember, there is an answer at the back of the notes if you ever needed to check. But add in as part of the question that the closing balance is 184980. And then see if you can work out the sales figure yourself. Good. Well, that's one way of asking it. The other way... I'll do within the next lecture.